some of you don't know us, I'm Sarath. I'm Smita. Trisha's okay. um, parents. Trisha is our uh, only child, uh, if you know that. So we, we have pampered her a little bit. We have spoiled her a little bit. Not very much. And uh, so let me read out this. But that's better. Uh, before we forget, uh, this is before we forget. We want to thank all our friends and uh, Trisha's uh, family members, relatives, and Trisha's family member, Tom's family members who have come halfway across the world uh, to attend to their wedding. So thank you very much. Uh, and some appreciate. friends go back as far as nursery school days. You know who I mean. And uh, thanks for coming. Uh, as I mentioned, Atisha is our only child. Uh, so, growing up in a small town like Brightsville, uh, she was never exposed to big cities until we moved into until she moved into Montreal. So, um, the first thing she did, the well, first time she left uh, Brightsville, uh, it was very hard for us. She was 17 when she went to Kingston. Uh, to, to her uh, bachelor's under, under, undergraduate program at Queens. And um, after we dropped her out, we got back home. I still remember, we were wondering, now what we're going to do? 24 uh, 7, we're still looking at each other, we were going from room to room, wondering, uh, it's a house that really becomes very empty. If it's only one child. But anyway, we got over that. Then uh, Trisha met uh, um, at Notre Dame. 2005, and she went to Notre Dame for a co-op program from the University of um, uh, at Notre Dame. Say she went for a co-op program, co-op term. We drove her down to Notre Dame and put her up in an uh, apartment over there. And she was quite upset, of course, uh, as we were leaving. And the only thing I could tell her is that if you need us, give us a call. It will take us only four and a half hours to get back to you. It's not very far. So, so she was kind of settled down a little bit. And after that, she started to join Notre Dame. So, so that's how Notre Dame story started. Then um, there she met uh, Tom. But there are a couple of stories I will tell about uh, how she met Tom. Um, one day, I came back from the uh, <laughs> That's one of those. <laughs> yes. The funniest one is, um, um, it, it, it was a very hot in the Midwest USA. South Bend, where it was in Notre Dame, is 95 to 100 degrees temperature. And humidity was uh, almost 100%. And she made a quick call to Smita. I wasn't home saying that. She gone out jogging with a friend. Um, so when I got home, Smita said, she's gone jogging with a friend. I said, she is the skinniest person I've seen. <laughs> what is she doing jogging around with her? Um, we thought that. And with a friend. So uh, something doesn't fit in here. <laughs> so anyway, that was the first one. Then the second thing she did is that um, we gave her the car to take it to uh, South Bend. So she, had to, she left home and she arrived in South Bend. And she had been four and a half hours. And she's supposed to call us because we worry. We were in Shields Valley, um, USA, and it was 69 all by herself. And, um, but we waited, uh, we waited, and we waited. The phone call never came in. At 11 at night, she made a phone call saying, Oh, she got to come, guys. That I arrived this afternoon, and, uh, but I got busy. I went to somebody's birthday party. And, uh, Oh, something doesn't fit right here. And I guess you guys guess who that friend is. So, Tom, head up with you. Um, <laughs> we met Tom that year, in Trisha's 21st birthday, and we met uh, Tom and went to Sarnia several times uh, after that. We also met uh, Tom's mom and dad, Sarah. He was a visitor to Sonia. Uh, then uh, after that, Trisha and her friend, uh, Queen's friend, um, Candice and Lisa decided to go to Europe. I guess Eddie, 
after you graduate, after you finish your university, you do go to Europe for backpacking, you can't call it. It's a three-week trip. Um, she went out, of course we were actually. It's a global south end, it's halfway across the world. So she's supposed to contact us all the time. All with the email. Well, once a day or every second day. Um, she, um, and uh, she went to Paris. She wanted to go to Paris. All three of them went to Paris. And uh, they took the Ryanair uh, from Edinburgh for a penny, a ticket, I believe. A ticket costing a penny. And um, I don't know about Ryanair, but I have heard horror stories about Ryanair. But anyway, uh, they went to Paris. And next day, there is no email. The day after that, no email. So we are wondering, what happened? So, and Sweden said, why don't you talk to Tom? Maybe, maybe she sent him an email. So I called Tom and saw him. I said, Tom, have you heard anything about Trish? It's been three days, and we are worried sick. There are three girls running around in Paris, and we haven't heard anything. So Tom said, no, she hasn't heard anything, but he had an idea. And I go to my email and I open it. There is an email from Tom. Um, it's an it's a English version that says, We are, I guess, to the police department or something. We are looking for three girls. <laughs> Canadian girls. 21 years lost in Paris. We can't seem to locate them. I, I mean, could you please find out what happened to them or could you get a trace on them? And then he, what he did is he gave us the French version of that, uh, that paragraph. And I was wondering, how did he do that? I didn't know how Tom speaks French or writes French, and here is a section in French. Then after some I called him, he said, he used, I guess, one of the software, Double Fresh, I guess, I guess. And took the English version and throw it in, it turned into French. So we said, okay, before we do that, we'll call the hotel. And uh, the person on the other end does not speak English. And we don't speak French. So it went on, and finally, Holly, our neighbor, came to rescue. She's the one who speaks French. So she came around and spoke to us, helped us out, spoke to the hotel owner in Paris, and they said, oh yeah, they are here, they are having a ball, go over the town. I said, could you please let her know to give mom and dad at least an email? So anyway, that was one of the story. And Tom, by the way, I still have that email from you with your French translation, a uh, French version of that, that was saying that three girls lost in Paris. <laughs> uh, after um, both, uh, both Tisha and Tom moved to Montreal, uh, to McGill and Tom as a postdoc. And, uh, okay, let me see what I did. So after that, uh, yeah, Smith House was very relieved that um, uh, Trisha is not alone in all the big city. There is at least Tom next to him, uh, next to her, and uh, they will be, she'll be okay, she'll have trophy relief. In 2011, um, Trish and Tom announced that they get engaged, and we were really thrilled. And suddenly I started to think about it. I said, That little girl, uh, I was holding the newborn baby that many years ago and was crying her head off. And uh, now she just announced that she's getting married, or at least you know, the plan that engagement announcement. So we were really thrilled, and that Christmas they decided to come to sign up for spending Christmas. So we were uh, uh, to discuss also what we can do with the wedding. So we sat down and we talked to them. I said, look, you, you can have the wedding here in Sunny. They said, no, they have decided Montreal. It's going to be in Montreal because they have all their friends and they like to do it themselves and they don't want any help from us. I said, OK, if that's what you want, that's fine. So what I quickly did, I went to Amazon.com and ordered a book called How to Arrange Your Own Wedding by the Dummies. And I packed it up as a Christmas gift. And they both liked it, and I guess they read it, and they loved it, and we got a lot of music from that. They did a wonderful job. They have done all this themselves. Yeah.
then I decided to get Tom uh, a movie, a DVD <laughs> called Reading the Pets. I don't know if any one of you have seen that yes. movie. Um, so we all, four of us, uh, three of us sat down, four of us sat down and watched the movie. And uh, I'm sure Tom was relieved that uh, in the movie, Ben Stiller, um, who is uh, going to meet his uh, future uh, girlfriend's parents, went through some oh, mind-boggling <laughs> experience. Uh, the cat who flushes in the toilet, or he has to do through lie detector. And Tom was wondering, man, this has, this has to be the toughest thing. But anyway, he didn't have to go through any of that. Uh, so uh, so that, was, uh, that was a relief for him. Uh, then, uh, then Tom, uh, another thing he did is, uh, or maybe that's about to go there. No, I'm not embarrassing him. No, there is another Canadian tradition we are talking to. Um, normally what happens before you ask your um, girlfriend to, to marry her, or your job is to uh, travel to the, wherever it is, in our case, and write scroll, and ask the father of your girlfriend, that can I have your daughter's hand? Yeah. But tell me to do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a, you owe us a trip to Bryce Grove. So we expect her to have you come down there. But hey, you're going to have to ask for my hand, but you're not in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can just hand out to your hand. She said, uh, okay, uh, what else we could call it? I said, um, then she came up with a line that you're walking down the aisle with me to, to receive a son. So, so I said, I like that. <laughs> and uh, so now I have a new son, and uh, I'd like to raise a glass to Tom and Trish. Thank <laughs> you.